Under my last video, I received a question. Bernadette asked, Hi Johannes, curious to hear how you transitioned into minimalism or tips to transition into minimalism. And I thought this question would make for a great video, so today I'm going to answer it. Today I'm going to go over some general tips about how you can transition into minimalism and then I think I will talk about my personal minimalism journey in a separate video. So let's get started. I talked about this before but I believe that the most important thing is that you know your why. If you want to stick with minimalism in the long run you really need a strong compelling reason to stick with it. So think about what's important to you, what are your values and how do you want to spend your time. And then ask yourself how can minimalism help you to do these things. When you found some strong reasons write them down and then this will really help you to get going and to motivate you into action and also to motivate you to stick with it. If you don't have a strong reason for why you want to become a minimalist then it will be really hard to stick with it in tough times. But when you have a very strong reason, for example, you might want to get rid of your mortgage so you can stop working overtime and spend more time with your kids and things like this are really important to motivate you. When you understand your why and found strong reasons for minimalism, then you can move on to the second step, which is to start decluttering. I personally got started with minimalism by decluttering following the KonMari method and I would recommend it to you too, because I think it's a very effective and simple technique that works really well. When following the KonMari method, you declutter one category of things at a time, for example, you start with clothing and you just get all the clothing that you may have scattered around the house and put it all on one big pile. And then you take one thing at a time, look at it and ask yourself, does this spark joy? And if the answer is yes, then you keep it. And if the answer is no, then you get rid of it. Then you repeat this for every other category, for your personal documents, for your books, for your electronics and all the other stuff. Now when you're done with this you will probably have a bunch of stuff that you have to get rid of and it can be tough to know what to do with all this stuff. So what I like to do is first to try to sell as many of the things as possible, especially things that are in really good condition and that might be a bit more valuable, for example electronics or even high quality clothing, you can usually sell this. If it's in a good condition but you can't really sell it then you can donate it or give it away. If it's something that really can't bring value to anyone else anymore then you can recycle it and if there's really no chance to recycle it because it's made of materials that can't be recycled or anything then you can just throw it in the trash. But trash is really the last resort and I would always try to go through all the other steps to try to sell or donate or at the very least recycle because just throwing it in the trash is really not that good for the environment. A decluttering is not necessarily a one-time thing. I went through multiple rounds of decluttering so far. Whenever I do it, I get more practice and it gets easier with every time. The third step is just as important as the second one. It might even be more important. It is to buy less. If you just declutter and then not start buying less, then the decluttering was really for nothing because all it did was creating space so you can just buy more stuff and that's not the point. So only buy things that you really need. A useful rule is to wait for three days before you buy something and for bigger or more expensive things you could even extend this period of waiting for up to 30 days so you really make sure that it's not an impulsive decision but a really well thought out decision. When you decide to buy something I think it's a good idea to buy the best quality you can afford so you can make sure that it lasts as long as possible but don't believe that you always have to buy the most expensive things. Often you just pay a premium for the name of the brand and you can get very good quality for a small price if you don't care about brand names. Just do some research and try to find brands that offer good quality and good value for money while being ethically and sustainably made. When you want to buy less it's really useful to learn how to repair things because often we tend to just throw things away and buy something new when something breaks but often it's actually really easy to repair repair things and it saves us from buying something new. My fourth tip is closely related to the third one. It's to replace your shopping habits. 
I often used to go shopping and buy things I didn't really need just because I was sad or bored or just was in a bad mood and I bought a lot of things that I didn't need at all. And I think many people struggle with the same problem. So what's really useful here is that you identify the triggers that cause you to do this stress shopping or sad shopping or whatever else shopping you do. For example, if you notice that whenever you're stressed you tend to go shopping and buy something then you can find things you can do instead of shopping that replace this shopping habit with a more positive habit that serves the same purpose of reducing the stress but in a more healthy way you could for example go for a walk in the park or read a book or meditate do yoga exercise meet a friend there are a lot of possibilities just experiment and try different things and see what works for you there is this saying that we are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I found this to be very true in my own life. But it's not only the people around us that influence us, it's also the content we consume, the people we follow on Instagram, the books we read, the movies we watch. So if you want to change your behavior, it's really important to change the kind of influences you have in your everyday life. If you follow a lot of very materialistic people on Instagram that always show expensive clothing and expensive cars, then it's really difficult to get away from this consumer mindset because you will always compare yourself to those people you see on there. What you can do is to step away from these negative influences and instead proactively curate the influences you have in your life. So follow people who are on the same path as you, who have the same values, the same goals and who motivate you and inspire you to keep going. And also surround yourself with people who share your values and who don't distract you or have a negative influence on you but who actually support you and inspire you. Finally, I believe that it's very important that you keep a beginner's mind. That means that you always see yourself as a student, as someone who's still learning. Because when you think that you know everything, that's when you stop learning. So when you understand the basics of minimalism, go deeper and understand the deeper truths that are underlying minimalism. There are a lot of different aspects to minimalism. There are financial aspects to it, environmental aspects, spiritual aspects, and there's really a lot to learn and you can always go deeper. I feel like the more I know about minimalism, the more I'm motivated to stick with it and the easier it gets to let go of things and to live a simple life. So watch videos on minimalism, read books, watch documentaries and always maintain that beginner's mind, that student's mindset and try to learn more. I hope you found these tips helpful and I hope they will help you on your transition into minimalism. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, it really helps a lot. And write your thoughts in the comments below. Tell me about your own minimalism journeys and maybe share some tips that helped you. I think this would be really interesting for other viewers. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys if you want in my next video.